This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Hello there and welcome back to another more maker focused video. I've recently acquired two circuit boards from an old treadmill that were given me to scrap or just do whatever I want with. I was originally just going to take a few components off of them and then chuck the husks of them in my e-waste bin. But as I looked over these boards more, I realized that there are some seriously cool things on here. So today I'll be desoldering some of the super cool components that the nerdier among us may enjoy seeing. I've got two boards here, the smaller one which isn't anything too crazy, and the larger one which is where the real goodies are at. The bigger board came with a massive heat sink on it, but since these things had been sitting on the floor of a garage for about two years, and when they came out of the treadmill they were misted with treadmill belt lubricant, I'm sure you can imagine the horrifying amount of garage floor gunk that was stuck to them. Needless to say, I pulled the heat sink off and washed everything off with some alcohol. But this heat sink has to be shown to you guys, because this thing is quite frankly awesome and I genuinely can't wait to use it for a project that I have planned in the near future. I may even make a video on it, so stay tuned for that if I do. Now, let's get my soldering gear out and heat it up. I'll be starting with the little board because, well, save the best for last, am I right? This little board looks like a small switch mode power supply to me considering that it has all of the characteristics of one. A full bridge rectifier, some power filtering, a high voltage filter capacitor, a transformer, a transistor of some kind, and some output filtering with some capacitors and an inductor. And now that I've mentioned a high voltage filter capacitor, I should tell you that if you're thinking about messing with any circuit boards with these kinds of capacitors, generally found in power supplies, you need to be sure that you know that they are discharged, and if they aren't, you need to be certain that you know how to properly handle that. These can shock you, and depending on the circumstances, injure or kill you. You're fully responsible for whatever happens when messing with these boards, and you have been warned. With this little board, there are only a few things that really piqued my interest for desoldering. Those being the transistor, filter capacitors, that output inductor, the full bridge rectifier, and the transformer. I actually usually don't grab the transformers out of switch mode power supply boards, but this one looked pretty easy to desolder compared to most of the ones that I usually see, so I decided to pick it up. The transistor that was used on this board is a P0260AT N channel MOSFET, which has some interesting electrical characteristics considering it's not rated to handle much continuous drain current. Interesting, for certain. Useful? I'm not sure yet. As for the rest of the components on this board, I'll somewhat glance over these because it's really nothing too special of a board and I don't want to waste our time. The film capacitor was a 0.1 microfarad 275 volt one, the main filter is a 22 microfarad 400 volt electrolytic capacitor, the full bridge rectifier is a KBP206, and I got a 1000 microfarad 25 volt capacitor as well as a 680 microfarad 16 volt capacitor from the output filtering circuit. The transistor and output inductor are mysteries as far as values go. Alright, on to what everyone, including myself, is here for. The main motor control slash logic board. This thing is packed with power electronics and I absolutely love that. Power electronics are generally the most reusable components that can be found on PCBs, at least for the kinds of projects that I enjoy doing. I love me a good circuit designed to handle a lot of power. All right, let's get down to business and start by desoldering the one component that's on the back side of the PCB as that seems like a good starting point. This big thing is an absolute behemoth of a full bridge rectifier, the largest one that I've ever seen in person before. It looks like this rectifier, in combination with the three massive elephant in the room filter capacitors, were used to provide voltage to the big brushed DC motor that this board controlled. After breaking off some of the small ceramic disc capacitors to free up some space around the rectifier soldering joints, I could begin the desoldering. This was a difficult process. In the end, through a combination of solder removal and heating part of the component while rocking it back and forth to slowly work it out, I had myself a giant full bridge rectifier. What I'll use this for? I have absolutely no idea, but hey, I have one now. With the rectifier out, I might as well move on to the next massive component that's somewhat in the way the three giant filter capacitors. These are 200 volt 820 microfarad capacitors and they're ludicrously massive. In all honesty, I don't do projects that need these kinds of capacitors, or at least not right now, though they're always worth salvaging because when you do need them, they can be quite expensive. Plus, I've seen a few PC power supplies that are in the bin because of bulged mains filter capacitors, so having some spares on hand can be useful. Though, these ones here are probably larger than the ones you'd see in any average computer power supply. Now, let's get to some other interesting components, arguably the components that intrigue me the most. 
I'm working on a high-powered DC motor driver design of my own. And before you comment, no, I couldn't reuse this board because of proprietary logic and the fact that it runs on 120 volts mains AC. Mine has to run on batteries, which will be straight DC at a lower voltage. But I want to see what transistors they use to control the motor speed. And while I desolder the two main motor control transistors, I have a little anecdote for you. You can choose to believe me or not when I say this, but before I removed the heatsink from the board and cleaned everything off, I bet that the transistors used here would be IRFP260N and channel MOSFETs. They're pretty much the perfect chips for this job, and there are the MOSFETs that I've been developing my own design around. Well, it was quite awesome to see that the professionals who designed this board and me, an electronics hobbyist, were on the exact same page here. Both of the main transistors on this board are IRFP260Ns. It was quite validating to see that I made an agreeable choice of MOSFET to control a big DC motor and I've just scored some free MOSFETs to develop my own board with. These 260Ns can get somewhat pricey, so getting these two for free is great. Oh, and the other large chip which was mounted to the heatsink is just a dual diode power rectifier, so nothing too exciting there. On the topic of my little project, if you're taking inspiration for a project design of your own from other boards and are thinking about turning your digital drawings into a real product, you should check out the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. PCBWay provides reliable and high quality services for the creation of your custom circuit boards. Building a compact, integrated controller for one of your creations? Consider having your circuit board produced by PCBWay for an incredibly fair price. While you're at it, check out their PCB assembly services if you want to skip the micro soldering and receive a beautifully completed board to immediately integrate into your project. And if you're working on a larger project, that's also something PCBWay can help out with because of their expansive manufacturing capabilities. For any project, big or small, give PCBWay's services a look to see what they can do to make your designs come to life. As I was working on this board more and more, I just kept noticing more interesting things about it. One of those things being this absolute honk and shonker of an NTC thermistor to manage inrush current. It makes sense that it's massive. I mean, there sure is a lot of capacitance with those three 820 microfarad capacitors in parallel, but this thing is a little larger than a quarter. I've got to have it. Now I have it. I also spotted this socketed fuse that I quickly grabbed because it's not blown, so why not take it? It's a 3 amp 250 volt glass fuse, could come in handy for something in the future. This board looks like it has a second power supply built on it. The one that I've been disassembling is solely there to drive the motor, but there's this other one that I've been able to recognize by the high voltage filter cap, full bridge rectifier, transistor, and transformer. Pretty clearly this supplies to power the control electronics on this board, and it's got some useful components in it too. I'll be taking that filter capacitor, transistor and heatsink, as well as that full bridge rectifier. All those components are always useful to have around. While I was desoldering these components, I also remembered to grab the two power resistors that were hanging out around the main MOSFETs. Exactly the purpose of these resistors? I'm not certain, but power resistors are another component that's always good to have on hand, so it'd be dumb of me to not grab these while I'm here. Man, this board is starting to look a little barren. Empty space everywhere except for one major block. Over here by these two black and two white boxes. What are these? These are some 12 volt DC relays. The two white ones are really high amperage, being rated at 30 amps each, and the black ones are much lower power but still useful being 10 amp relays. Desoldering these things is never fun. Solder suckers and solder wick never seem to get all the solder out of the holes, and due to the way that the pins are laid out, heating multiple of them at once is a challenge. Combine that with how easy I found it to be to rip the legs out of the bottom of a lot of relays when desoldering them, and I'm genuinely amazed that I managed to extract all four of them without a scratch on any of them. It wasn't easy. There's a whole 20 minutes of video I've had to cut out here, but totally worth it to get some good relays. After cleaning off all of the components with some isopropyl alcohol, as a lot of them had some thermal paste or flux residue left on them, it was time to look at the haul from these two boards. Oh dear, I wonder how many vocal takes it will take me to get through this massive list. From these boards, I acquired one massive heatsink that has a bracket for three TO247 or similar package components, three 200 volt 820 microfarad capacitors, one 16 volt 680 microfarad capacitor, one 400 volt 47 microfarad capacitor, one 400 volt 22 microfarad capacitor, one 25 volt 1000 microfarad capacitor, two 0.1 microfarad film capacitors, two 
5 watt power resistors that seem to be 0 0.3 ohms each, one TO220 heatsink, three different full bridge rectifiers, two 30 amp relays and two 10 amp relays, one unknown inductor, one giant NTC, one small transformer, one 3 amp 250 volt glass fuse, one F30U60 dual diode rectifier, one P0260 AT N channel MOSFET, one 4N90 CT N channel MOSFET, and two IRFP 260N N channel MOSFETs. Now that is a good component haul if I've ever seen one. Far better than what I feel I got from the last video desoldering components. These components are going to be absolutely great to use in projects and to mess around with. There's a good chance that you'll see some of them pop up on this channel again soon here. I hope that some of you watching this found these boards as interesting as I did, and maybe even learned a thing or two from this video. In any case, that's all that I have for you today. I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.